hindi mo sinabi ko rin kanina ang insisyan mo. Ayaw mo na. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought unprecedented changes to our usual ways of living. But the Department of Education remains unfazed by these challenges to fulfill the mission of Sulong Edo Kalidad, the rallying call for national effort to deliver quality basic education to all Filipinos, which involve aggressive reforms in the four key areas. K-12 curriculum review and update, improving the learning environment, teachers upskilling and reskilling, and engagement of stakeholders for support and collaboration to move forward together as we prepare the education system for the future. The call for Sulong Edukalidad will continue and we have built the framework of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan or the BELCP to put the needs of the learners hey, at okay. top priority. DEBED BELCP is a major response and commitment to protect the health, safety, and well-being of learners, teachers, and personnel. The plan aims to provide opportunities to continue education even in these trying times with a BELCP in place supported by unprecedented number of diverse stakeholders from the academe, media, industry groups, NGOs, business and private individuals, Sulong Edo Caridad will be able to sustain the aims in its reform for quality basic education. In our journey towards quality education, we have established the four pillars of aggressive reforms from the start and we have been continuing to progress in this pillars. In improving the learning environment, we took action in the construction and rehabilitation of school buildings, ensured the availability of learning materials and equipment, and prioritized our last mile schools. The challenges of the pandemic also brought to light the urgent need to upgrade our ICT infrastructure to service the needs of education. In terms of the teachers of skilling and reskilling, we were able to establish more innovative professional standards for teachers and school heads. We have aligned the professional development of teachers with their career progression to track their development as part of the National Educators Academy of the Philippines Transformation. With the launch of the Education Futures Program, where we will be focusing on innovative actions and solutions to improve the state of our education, we are now more than ready to start a new journey and continue our fight for quality education for all Filipino learners. Finally, we've given high importance to the engagement of stakeholders for support and collaboration. In support of this, we have convened the Philippine Forum for Accessible Quality Basic Education or the Education Forum, which leverage other partnerships for education quality and strengthen partnership with the Philippine Normal University as the country's national center for teacher education. The department has also been developing a professional development program for teachers and school leaders in order to equip them with the skills, materials, and data that will allow them to help their students prepare for PISA 2022. This intervention consists of the following components. Online training for teachers and school leaders, development of learning materials and practice tests for students, deepening the analysis of the PISA 2018 results, supporting school-level action research. Now that the year is about to end, our commitment to Sulo Edo Caridad will continue and will be far from being gone. With a lot at stake, 
considering our new knowledge and experience from this year's challenges, we are equipped to face a new future. As we head on to the future where we will face many challenges and uncertainties, the department will always be the guardian of every Filipino learner's right to education. Sino ba ang hindi naapektuhan? Sino ba ang hindi nag-alala? Sino ba ang hindi nalito? Lahat tayo ay naapektuhan. Lahat tayo ay nag-aalala. Lahat tayo ay nalito. Dahil binago ng pandemyang dulot ng COVID-19, ang paraan ng paumuhay ng lahat ng mga Pilipino saan mang sektor ka nabibilang. Tumigil ang panandalian ang ating mga nakagawian. Tumigil ang lahat ng uri ng transaksyon. Tumigil ang lahat ng operasyon ng mga paaralan. Nakalilito. Nakakaba. Paano na ang kinabukasan ng mga kabataan? Paano na tayo sa hinaharap? Opisyal na inilulunsad ng kagawaran ng edukasyon sa paunguna ng Office of the Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction ang DepEd Teaches. Ito ay isang online na programa na gagabay sa mga guro, tagapangasiwa, magulang at mag-aaral hinggil sa mga pagbabago sa batayang edukasyon ngayong new normal. Ang DepEd Teaches ay angkla sa sulong edukalidad na nakatuon sa apat na pangunahing pangailangan ng mapunyaging reforma, tungo sa makalidad na pagtuturo at pagkatuto. Una, pagre-review at pagsasapanahon ng kurikulum ng K-12. Ikalawa, pagpapaunlad ng kapaligiran pampagkatuto. Ikatlo, paglinang ng mga bagong kasanayan sa mga guro. At ang ikaapat, ang paikipag-ugnay sa mga stakeholder para sa suporta at kolaborasyon. Sa pamagitan ng virtual learning platform, ang DepEd Teaches ang magsisilbing bukas na komunidad ng pagsasanay na titipon sa mga guro, tagapamunong pang-edukasyon at sa sino mang may pagnanain sa pagtataguyod ng kalidad na edukasyon sa bansa at sa pagtagumpay ng bawat Pilipinong mag-aaral. Ang mga official, education specialist, Learning Content Expert at Outstanding Teacher ng DepEd ang magiging tagapanayam na magbabahagi ng kanilang kaalaman at kasangayan sa kurikulum, pagtuturo at pagkatuto, pagtataya at lahat ng kaugnay na mahalaga sa proseso ng pagtuturo at pagkatuto sa new normal. Bilang mga frontliner ng classroom, inaasahang magiging aktibo ang mga guro sa programang ito. Ang mga tema at paksa ay ang kop sa kanilang pangangailangan at konteksto sa pamagitan ng accessible na platform, ang social media. Sumali na sa OUCI Family sa DepEd Teaches kung sama-sama mapahuhusay pa ang mga guro, kung sama-sama higit na malilinang natin ang mga mag-aaral. Good afternoon to all, and good afternoon as well to our Facebook Live audience. We had an amazing event yesterday, and in fact, in less than an hour, we have reached more than 13,000 educators who registered on this pilot episode. And on the latest figure, we have around 50,000 participants. And this is a great news. We hope that you keep on following us on our Facebook account, The DepEd Philippines. Don't forget to like and share DepEd Teaches with your colleagues. Also, we invite our dear participants to post their selfies during the session with having or having a hashtag, I support 
DepEd teaches. Good afternoon. Indeed, Sir July, that's a wonderful news. The response we got is overwhelming, and we hope we can live up to your expectations. For sure, each one of you has personal goals for signing up in today's episode, but one thing I am pretty much sure that you will agree with me. Well, this one I just read that anyone who stops learning is old, whether this happens at 20 or 80, but anyone who keeps on learning not only remains young, but becomes constantly more valuable regardless of physical capacity. That is amazing, right, Sir July? So we remain valuable and relevant as long as we continue, we keep on learning. And this is what DepEd Teaches is trying to offer to you, our dear teachers. Our mission is empowering teachers, enabling learners. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the first episode of DepEd Teaches, entitled Overcoming Challenges in Curriculum. Our speaker today, Director Jocelyn D.R. Andaya, completed her BS Education degree and Master of Arts in Education, major in Curriculum and Instruction from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. She received the Australian Development Scholarship to pursue Master of Educational Management and Leadership at the University of Sydney in Sydney, Australia. She's also a recipient of the Australian Leadership Award in 2012. She's a writer, a speaker, and a resource person on strategic planning, curriculum, leadership, and management. Joining us today is a competent and amazing visionary that leads the Bureau of Curriculum Development. Let's all welcome Director Jocelyn D.R. Andaya. Good afternoon. Mayo na hapon. Magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Welcome to the second day of DepEd Teachers and the very first session on uh, a series of topics for this uh, week. I am Joyce Andaya, the Director of the Bureau of Curriculum Development. And for the next 30 minutes, I shall be sharing with you what curriculum challenges we encountered, especially during this pandemic, and how we responded and are continuing to respond to these challenges. I have titled my session as In Search of the Credible, which is of course a takeoff from the ASUS logo, In Search of Incredible. Because in these times, when the results of the Southeast Asia primary learning metrics and the trends for international math and science studies are so low, and we're trying our best to determine where the gaps are. We need to be able to work on education reforms that are believable that we can seek tangible results on, something doable and realistic, and most importantly, research-based. There are three parts to my presentation. Imaging, or what we call the challenges or contexts, and then uh, re-imaging, or our responses to such challenges, and re-imagining, or moving on, or our expected outcomes to the responses that I will outline here. The first challenge, okay? After eight years of K-12 implementation, um, the, 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 the challenge is on curriculum, congestion, seamlessness, and relevance. There exists some disconnection, overlap of content, and repetition. Additionally, there are so many learning competencies in a particular learning standard that it takes more time for the teacher to finish teaching the competencies than it would take them to teach the standards. While it is expected that the teacher should be able to exercise flexibility in terms of teaching the competency in order to attain the standard, several teachers in the field have become so used to teaching the competencies they are expected to actualize these numerous competencies, which in most cases are faithfully delivered in the pretext of compliance, thus sacrificing quality instruction over quantity delivery. Simply put, 
the coverage of the subject matter tends to take priority over in-depth learning. While the unpacking of competencies from the learning standards is considered a blessing to some teachers because it guides them on the essential content, processes, skills, and values to be highlighted in classroom instruction, most of them see it as a curse because it limits the promise of curriculum flexibility. The next issue is on mother tongue-based multilingual education or MTB ML, MLE program, which has dogged us since its implementation. Questions on how do you teach a language that has many variations? Does the teacher have the capability to teach these variations? What materials have been developed in the teaching of the mother tongue have to be answered. Admittedly, language plays a big role in the reading readiness and writing skills of our learners. And because of this, the K-3 stage needs to be looked into as these foundational skills build on the higher skills in the next grade level. And finally, the implementation of the textbook program requires further evaluation as skills needed for Industry 4.0 need to be developed among our learners. We believe that if curriculum represents a conscious and systematic selection of knowledge, skills, and values, which shapes teaching, learning, and assessment, it then behooves the Department of Education to institutionalize mechanisms and processes to ensure viable learning ecosystem. In the face of all these concerns and issues, education must change to cope with these realities. The Bureau of Curriculum Development has identified ways by which we can respond to these challenges. We wanted something credible, policies that we believe can help leapfrog education. That's why my title for this session is In Search of the Credible. We want reforms that really will produce tangible outcomes that will respond to the needs of our learners in any key stage. What are then these credible interventions? The first is decentralization and devolution of curricular reforms which will be the norm in the coming years, giving the field offices and schools flexibility to contextualize and indigenize the curriculum. It is expected that teachers should be able to exercise uh, flexibility in terms of teaching the competencies in order to attain the standards, which of course is the basis of all learning competencies. The introduction of the most essential learning competencies or MELPs Okay. commences the department's curricular devolution. And the release of the MELCs is not just a response in addressing the challenge of the current pandemic, but is also part of the department's long-term response to the goal of sustainable development goal number four. Placing premium, of course, on enduring understanding has been the core idea behind the MELCs. A learning competency is considered enduring if it remains with learners long after a test or unit of study is completed or if it is useful beyond a single test or unit of study. Second credible intervention is that the Bureau is, has started examining the K-3 curriculum standards as it intends to develop and strengthen the foundation, I mean, the fundamental knowledge, skills, and attitude of early graders, particularly on language, numeracy, and moral literacies. Third intervention, reinforcing moral and civic competencies and strengthening mental health. The passage of Republic Act 11476 that seeks to revive GMRC as a separate subject from kinder to grade 10 pushes the Bureau of Curriculum Development to rethink the curricular standards on values education in the early grades. We also need to promote emotional resilience and come up with a unified program that will help strengthen social emotional skills of our learners. This pandemic has exposed us to the myriad issues on mental health and emotional well being of everyone. And a tight program on this will prove helpful.
to our learners. Fourth intervention, the blurring of subject matter lines firming up our 21st century skills. As the new normal ushers in, new set of skills are needed in navigating the uncertainties and volatilities it brings. Traditional subject matter will no longer suffice. What we need to focus on are uh, the development of transversal skills. Um, the Bureau is keen in its intention to offer interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary curriculum standards that cut across subject matter lines. Gone are the days when each subject is treated as uh, uh, in a compartmentalized manner. There has to be a seamless integration of several topics in the subject matter or, or, or in the different subject matters so that skills can be learned, not just in a particular learning area, but also in different learning areas. We need to include the competencies such as systems thinking, critical thinking, anticipatory thinking, integrated problem solving skills, normative skills and strategic skills in the curriculum because they are all vital in the advancement of sustainable development. Fifth intervention, to prepare our learners for the four curricular exits, we need to create a hybrid curriculum for academic STEM, arts and design, and TVL tracks. What does this mean? We just recognize that STEM plays a big role in Industry 4.0 and beyond, and our tracks need to be integrated in all these skills. Lastly, there is a need to ensure that the mantra, no child left behind, must find its place in our curriculum. We must make sure that our practice, practices and programs promote inclusion and truly cover those at the margins of society. The PIDS study, corroborated by the teams and the CPLM results, point to the fact that boys are now lagging behind in performance than girls. It's a complete turnaround from the time when we were concerned about more boys going to school and performing better than girls. These international lar large scale assessment results emphasize that girls are more likely to have higher level of achievements in both reading and writing literacy. All these interventions, teachers, colleagues, will be possible if systems are in place particularly flexible technologies such as modules, online, TV, radio are provided to address and support the learning standards. Admittedly, in today's age, we must make sure that what students learn in school are transferable and relevant to what they are ex um, experiencing outside of it. Meaning for schools to truly matter, the learning experiences we give our learners are either directly applicable to their personal aspirations, interests, or cultural experiences, or that are connected in some way to real world issues, problems, and context, or what we call relevance, be this personal and life. We can show that we can provide an uninterrupted learning experience that is on par with what we were offering before. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. I'd like to reiterate that we can show that we can provide an uninterrupted learning experience that is on par with what we were offering before. And the next slide, Okay, is important also as we need to establish connections across disciplines. How will you do that as teachers? Integration as, in, as an instructional approach should manifest in learning ex exercises and other performance tasks. It should strengthen the learner's understanding of concepts and ideas through establishing connections across disciplines. It is employed not to diminish or save a significant number of contact hours, but simply to make sure that skills are le learned in depth. Indeed, 
as John Dewey pointed out several decades ago, if we teach today's students as we taught yesterday's, then we rub them of tomorrow, emphasizing the importance of having to make the lessons more updated, more in keeping with the times, and more on teaching skills for lifelong learning. Finally, next slide. Because of the changing nature of education, particularly of learners, teachers, and assessment, it impels us to rise to the challenge of being valuable and relevant, just like what our host mentioned a while back, in order to harness the potential of our learners. In closing, uh, I'd like to mention and to emphasize the words uttered de several decades ago, but are still important up to now. Okay. We are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. This is the, the time, this is not the time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. And we must act now, whether uh, the results of the teams PISA and CPLM were given to us or were distributed to us. The time is to act is now in terms of uh, ensuring that our learners are able to possess the skills necessary to face the challenges in today's world and even during this pandemic. With that, I, 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 I would like to say thank you for listening um, to our teachers that are currently watching. I'd like to say thank you for always uh, making sure that you prepare well for your learners. Keep on teaching. The world is yours for shaping. Magandang hapon muli sa ating lahat at maraming salamat sa pakikinig. Thank you, Director Jocelyn and Daya, for sharing invaluable input. It was extremely informative and we appreciate you personally taking time to provide us with that timely information. So to our live audience on Facebook, don't forget to share your insights and comments using the hashtag I support DepEdTeaches and another hashtag DepEdTeaches Episode 1. Some gentle reminders to our audience. For you to receive your certificate of participation for yesterday's event, kindly accomplish the evaluation form through the link flashed on the screen. And due to the very high volume of participants who registered for today's activity, it would take around 10 working days for you to receive your certificate of participation. And also, do not forget to register to our next episode about overcoming challenges in learning delivery modalities to be presented to us by Director Laila P. Ariola of the Bureau of Learning Delivery. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our pilot episode. On behalf of the curriculum and instruction, thank you all for making time in your busy schedule to join us here this afternoon. Once again, it's been a pleasure to host this event, and I wish everyone a pleasant day. <laughs>